Christian Richardson, Senior International Trade Specialist with U.S. and Foreign Commercial Service here in Phoenix, Arizona. Christian's topic is going to be federal resources for growing globally. Christian, why is exporting important for small or medium-sized U.S. businesses? Well, Diana, it's important to the company specifically because it helps them deal with cyclical and seasonal variations in in the, their industry and within their individual business. A company, for example, that manufactures snowboard clothing might look to the southern hemisphere so that they can make it through the summer months. Um, but it's really important to the U.S. economy uh, that small and medium-sized companies look at uh, international opportunities because they're really the economic drivers of, of – uh, of this economy, and they're the ones that create the majority of U.S. jobs. Uh, these these companies uh, are historically uh, not that great at exporting, not that great at selling overseas. In fact, um, less than one percent of all American companies actually do international trade, um, and most of those are only exporting to one market, whether it be Canada or Mexico. Most often, boy, those numbers are staggering. What is the mission of the U.S. Commercial Service, and what services do you guys offer? The mission of the U.S. Commercial Service is to assist small and medium-sized American companies. So those are companies that have a primary um, a U.S. value content in the product uh, or the service that they offer uh, to help those companies enter international markets faster, uh, and, uh, profitably, and more efficiently. And the way we do that is by offering four primary services. And those services are um, advocacy and counseling. So helping American companies uh, compete in the global marketplace and educating those companies on how to do so. Uh, providing those companies with market research. Uh, helping American companies at international trade events or on international trade missions. Or maybe it might be attending a, a, a trade show here in the United States, like the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas every January, which is just coming up. We bring many foreign buying delegations in, uh, escorted by our US Embassy personnel from overseas, bringing them to these shows here in the United States, which are certified by the US Department of Commerce, and provide assistance on the show floor with, with uh, business matchmaking. But primarily, our agency is a business matchmaking uh, entity of the United States government. So whether an American company is looking for a distribution partner, a joint venture partner, a sales representative, or an agent of some sort in an international market, we have about 170 offices in 80 countries that can help arrange for American companies to meet with those potential international business partners. Boy, those services would be invaluable to any small business thinking of going uh, outside of the United States. So how would a business know if they're export ready? Um, well, by contacting us. Uh, we like to uh, get in touch with the companies uh, when they're just in the process of creating their international business and marketing plans to help them identify uh, where the opportunities really lie and how, well, basically just help the company not run in that uh, in the gerbil wheel uh, going around and around and, and yet try to focus their resources, the limited resources that these small and medium-sized companies do have on real opportunities. Um, a company that has typically a company that has been in business for about five years and is doing business domestically uh, operating in the black would be a good candidate to take that leap into an international market. But today, almost every company has a website. And by, a, by default, if you have a website, then you're a global business. Companies that uh, we often hear companies say, uh, no, we don't sell into any international markets. And I say, okay, you've never sold to Canada? They say, oh, that doesn't count. <laughs> well, they are um, selling internationally. And if you are um, using maybe a, a, a common freight forwarder to help you bring your products into the Canadian market, it's not a much greater leap to be able to go into maybe Mexico, for example, or, or we could help those companies take a look at selling into the European Union. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities, and it's not rocket science, but it can be daunting at looking at uh, selling overseas proactively, but that's where we come into place. It seems to me that it would be very difficult to, to determine which market to enter 
uh, how would a company come up to that decision? I think you mentioned some of it at the very beginning in some of the services that you provide. Uh, could you expound on that maybe a little bit? Well, certainly. Um, our offices overseas are continually collecting and refining market research so that we know where the opportunities lie by geographic region or by industry subsector. And we can put together a list of um, a list of countries, let's say a top 10 list of countries in conjunction with a company and, and what the company feels like where their uh, potential demand is overseas. Uh, and we can refine that to, let's say, a top three uh, lowest hanging fruit markets. Much of that is forecasted future demand. Uh, but we also look at other factors like where do or which countries overseas not only have this demand but also have a transparent legal system. Where which, which countries have a, a similar business culture to the United States? Uh, what countries speak English? Uh, those are some 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 factors that American companies should look at. If you're looking at selling into the European Union, for example, while most people uh, or business people in, in the European Union now speak English, um, the, the UK has a very transparent legal system. Uh, in fact, our own legal system is based on, on the British system. And, uh, and the, the language of doing business is English. So we often recommend to companies who are new to exporting that they look at the, that the United Kingdom as kind of an entry point to the, to the, the rest of the European Union. Um, so those are some of the factors that we, we look at. Yeah, that sounds like a very good idea. Um, I believe that at the very beginning you mentioned that, that the U.S. Commercial Service assists companies in trade shows or participating in trade shows. Could you expand on that as well? Sure. Uh, I'm sure that uh, many of the viewers uh, of, of this uh, recording will have had some experience in attending a large trade show in the past. Often companies will spend a lot of money and um, a lot of their time, resources, in attending a show, maybe buying some booth space. And uh, it will take a very shotgun approach to potential success at the show, standing there, handing out business cards as people walk by throughout the course of the week. Well, sometimes these companies come home from the show and having spent tens of thousands of dollars uh, with little to show for it. Well, what we try to do as an agency is help the company take a very proactive approach at targeting international business partners uh, or buyers uh, while they attend these shows. So we will identify the international visitors who are coming to the United States to the show, or if the American company is traveling abroad, we try to identify the potential business partners that will be at that show for the, for the U.S. company. And then we arrange for meetings to be held between our American client and the, the uh, international buyer, uh, maybe in the U.S. pavilion of the trade show if it's overseas. If it's here in the United States, there we usually have what we call an international trade center off the show floor where we can arrange for American companies to meet with their international um, prospective business partners. And during the show, we, if it's overseas, we provide interpretation or translation services for our companies. In addition to that, uh, we will usually arrange, like I mentioned, a U.S. pavilion. So it's a, a larger area that we um, contract with the show organizer to obtain. And we'll subdivide that space by the amount of American companies that wish to participate in the show or in our U.S. pavilion. And because uh, it's kind of somewhat of a volume discount that we get from the show organizer, instead of a, a U.S. company paying, let's say, $20,000 for a booth space, they get maybe half the amount of space, but they only pay $2,000 for that, for that same or for that space. And we're there to hold the company's hand while they're overseas doing all sorts of activities, whether it be even making hotel arrangements or travel arrangements for the, for the company, to driving international customers right to their booth, to providing that interpretation service right at the show floor. And by the way, it's not just uh, someone we pull off the street to provide the, the service or the translation services. It's an individual who works for the United States government who understands the industry sector that those companies are uh, operating in. Um, and we have a lot of really good feedback 
about these uh, services that we offer at, tra uh, at trade shows and on trade missions. And we, we'd, we'd be happy to provide uh, testimonials from other companies who participated in the past. Boy, the assistant just seems to be invaluable. Um, if a company is interested in your services, how would they go about finding the resources? Well, if there's one thing that listeners to this recording are uh, well, are taking with them today, I hope that would be www.export.gov. The export.gov uh, website is the export information portal uh, of the of the federal government, and there is a uh, contact us or locations tab on our homepage and companies can find information for their trade specialists in their in their region. However, here in Arizona, um, I would welcome any company to reach out to me personally um, if they're interested in exporting and I'll put them in touch. If it's not with me, uh, then in touch with one of my four uh, colleagues who are also international trade specialists with our organization. And uh, I can be reached um, uh, by finding my contact information on our website at uh, www export.gov forward slash Arizona, and Arizona is spelled out. Thank you, Christian. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners today? I would just like to add that uh, historically our country has had a very myopic view of doing business internationally. And in order for our economy to remain competitive in the global marketplace, it's very important that small and medium-sized enterprises look to opportunities overseas. 95% of the world's population and nearly 80% of world GDP lie outside the borders of the United States. And if American companies um, are not looking to those opportunities, they're really missing the boat, in my opinion. And the U.S. Commercial Service stands ready to assist American companies in getting on that boat and sailing those international seas. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Diana. Appreciate the opportunity.